today, the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Holy Mass, is offered for the intentions of Pat Short. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. Today. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray, O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are counted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it on her. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Obey the voice of the Lord your God, keeping those commandments and laws of his that are written in the book of this law, and you shall return to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. For this law that I enjoin on you today is not beyond your strength or beyond your reach. 
It is not in heaven, so that you need to wonder, who will go up to heaven for us and bring it down to us, so that we may hear it and keep it? Nor is it beyond the seas, so that you need to wonder, who will cross the seas for us and bring it back to us, so that we may hear it and keep it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for your observance. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the unseen God and the firstborn of all creation, for in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, everything visible and everything invisible, thrones, dominations, sovereignties, powers, all things were created through him and for him. Before anything was created, he existed, and he holds all things in unity. Now the church is his body, he is its head. As he is the beginning, he was the first to be born from the dead, so that he should be first in every way. Because God wanted all perfection to be found in him, and all things to be reconciled through him and for him, everything in heaven and everything on earth, when he made peace by his death on the cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a lawyer who, to disconcert Jesus, stood up and said to him, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? He replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbour as yourself. You have answered right, said Jesus, do this and life is yours. But the man was anxious to justify himself and said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was once on his way down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of brigands. They took all he had, beat him and then made off, leaving him half dead. Now a priest happened to be travelling down the same road, but when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite who came to the place saw him and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan traveller who came upon him was moved with compassion when he saw him. He went up and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. He then lifted him onto his mount carried him to the inn and looked after him. Next day he took out two denarii and handed them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and on my way back I will make good any extra expense you have. Which of these three, do you think, proved himself a neighbour to the man who fell into the brigand's hands? The one who took pity on him He replied, Jesus said to him, go and do the same yourself. The Gospel of the Lord. Two weekends ago, on a Saturday morning, I was in Ilford at the ordination of a new priest for our diocese. That very night, a young woman was murdered in the same place, as it happens right outside the house of a friend of mine. The contrast between those two events, one good and one evil, was so contrasting that it led me feeling incredibly disturbed. We live in a very dangerous society. London is now the murder capital of the world. Many of us don't feel safe venturing out alone after dark and our roads our roads let's be honest are veritable places of peril as road rage seems to grip an ever-growing number of motorists even in our own ever so genteel Leon C and as a priest you are ever so conscious of accidents and crime scenes and wanting to be able to give some solace not to mention giving the sacraments if a Catholic is involved but even this has now become an issue because of health and safety and crime scene protocols and whilst we may feel inclined to want to offer help on such occasions sometimes We might be forgiven 
for thinking that it is easier to pass by on the other side. When I studied sacred scripture as a student, the one thing I remember above all else was being taught that the Bible is ultimately all about Jesus Christ. The Bible is ultimately all about Jesus Christ. Like a fine diamond, the more you look at it, the more you see this in all of its facets. The story of the Good Samaritan is all about Jesus, for sure, as well as about morality. That we should care for the suffering for those on the margins and those outside. The church, though, has always seen this story as a great illustration of who Jesus is. There's one place you can see this very beautifully illustrated. If you ever go to Chartres Cathedral in one of the rose windows, you see both the story of the Good Samaritan and the story of the fall intertwined. The fathers of the church saw this as a great illustration of how Jesus Christ cures our fallen human nature. Jerusalem, from which that man is travelling, is the symbol of perfection and of a well-ordered good life. Jericho was considered a place of sin and was downhill from Jerusalem in both senses. So the man is going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and that represents the fall. And we're all that man who through sin have made our way from the heights of God's friendship to the depths of Jericho. We are meant to be drawn into this story so that we can identify with this figure. He was robbed. Symbolically, sin robs us of what is best in us. When we fall out of friendship with God, our minds become distorted. When we lose friendship with God, we are robbed of the proper functioning of our wills. We don't know what to choose anymore or what is right. And we are robbed in a certain way of our human dignity. The Council of Trent says that we have lost that likeness unto God. Anyone who's been robbed will tell you. It's not the things you lose, but it's the dignity that you are stripped of that affects you. And so with sin, we are robbed of our human dignity and the beauty that we ought to have. The robbers beat him and leave him half dead. Sin also leaves us feeling half dead, or rather, only half alive. In the eyes of the world, if we're living in sin, we might seem to be functioning at a very high level, but you're half dead. You're not fully alive. As St. Irenaeus famously says, the glory of God is a person fully alive. The implication is that if we are in sin, we're not fully alive and not what God wants us to be. So this is all a portrait of us. A priest and a Levite see the man and they pass by. The moral behind this is clear. When you see someone in need, you should go to help them. But the fathers of the church again say, look at those who pass by. They are going down in the same direction as the man. They too are going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Religion is affected by sin, of course it is. They represent, the priest and the Levite, a religious practice that has gone wrong, that has become self-absorbed, self-reverential, and just done for the sake of the ego. Fallen religion is not going to save us then or now. And then Jesus comes along in the person and the portrait of the Good Samaritan. He's depicted as a Samaritan because they were hated. They were outsiders. Jesus was not loved universally. He was hated. And that hatred culminated in his death on the cross. 
And the Samaritans were also a mixed race, half Jew, half pagan. Jesus himself is God and man, but Jesus takes pity. And this is the portrait of our God, characterised by having pity for us. That is why he has come, precisely to save us, coming close, gathering us up, healing us with wine and oil, which is the sacramental life of the church, as we see it used in the sacraments. He pours into our wounds his life by means of the sacraments, just as the church pours into wounded souls the life of Jesus Christ. And before he leaves, he takes out two silver coins. He pays for the man. The redemption in Latin means to pay for, to buy back. Jesus, by his death, has paid the price and bought us back. So in the life of the church, we celebrate the fact that we have been saved, redeemed, bought back. But the most poignant words are the final ones. Now go and do the same yourself. You know, it touches our consciences on the level of what we call sins of omission. We say it, don't we, at the start of every Mass. I confess to Almighty God for those things that I've done and those things that I've failed to do. How often have we seen someone, metaphorically at least, beaten up and half dead on our way? Someone perhaps in sin who needs redemption, who needs to have Jesus pour that wine and oil into their wounds. How often have we had the chance to do an act of practical charity, which we've ignored, passed by on the other side, couldn't be bothered, even complained that someone was in the way. Just inconvenient. So many victims of life. And we think somebody else will help them, someone else will care for them. Someone else will do it. Have we perhaps become unwittingly also casualties of a fallen religion? Like those who pass by on the other side, become thoughtless, self-reverential, egotistical. We never have to look very far to see it, do we? But the one person in the gospel who was never insensitive to the plight of others is our blessed lady. She always went out of herself seeking out those who needed her love. And that's why the church applies to Mary. And we're going to hear this on the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel later in the week. Those words of the book of Ecclesiasticus. I am the mother of beautiful love and of holy hope. Her pure, her beautiful love is the inspiration and the model of our charity, of our love of Christ and neighbour, which motivates us and moves us as we travel along the roads of this life. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day 
in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken with the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In baptism, God has made us his adopted children. We turn to our Father in prayer now, trusting that he hears us. For all those who work to alleviate suffering, may Christ the Good Samaritan be their model and strength. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our nation at this time, that those who govern may always seek the ways of integrity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For peace in our world at this time, that the suffering people of Ukraine may be given fortitude and their aggressors receive the grace of conversion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have died recently, and for the dead whose anniversaries occur about this time. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Let us join our prayers with those of our Blessed Mother. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother, Mother of mercy. mercy. Hail our life, our sweet and, and our hope. hope. To, thee to thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee, to thee do we send up our sighs. Morning, morning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn so then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy, mercy towards us. us. And, and after this, our exile, show unto us, us the fruit blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, the clement, the loving, the sweet, sweet Virgin Mary. In the silence of our hearts, let us bring any special needs before God's throne of mercy. Father, you show your saving love in the face of Christ, your Son. May we make him our most welcome guest and eager to hear his word as we make these prayers through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
my brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our victory in Christ. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs, as in one chorus of exultant praise we acclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we are brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and Giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. show each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you 
take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. The sins of the world. Have Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, and under me. But for the sake of the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just wish you a very blessed week ahead at work or wherever you are, and uh, hope you manage to keep cool. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.